This is pork belly burnt end. Well, at least it's gonna be once it hits the smoker. Another name for these is meat candy, and that's because the traditional way of cooking these is to smoke them for around two to three hours before you take them out into an alpha oil tray, some barbecue sauce, some brown sugar, get them nice and sweet, caramelized, get them super tender till they melt in your mouth and become exactly that, little bits of meat candy. However, today, we're gonna to do something a little bit different. We've been doing that one same way for years now. We're gonna go with an American classic in peanut butter, and jelly. Now, before you jump into the comments, yes, here in Australia, we refer to it as jam, but the traditional name for it is peanut butter and jelly. So we're gonna stick to that. Now, I can tell you from past experience, you can't just mash this all together. It just doesn't taste that good. There are a few things you need to add to the uh, recipe to make it really banging. So stick around and I'll show you how. Now before we make the sauce, we wanna get our pork belly burnt ends prepped and onto the smoker. Now if you've never made pork belly burnt ends before, they are super simple to do. They're one of the easiest things to cook, I think. All you need to do is grab yourself a pork belly. Now I've just grabbed two small ones from my local supermarket here and start off with a really sharp knife. You wanna pick a corner, you wanna just start there, slide your knife underneath the skin and then just start peeling the skin back, trimming it with the knife slowly as you go. All right, so there's no easy way to do it. Just take your time and just press your knife against the skin as you peel it back so you don't trim off too much of that meat. And you get your leftover skin that you've peeled off there, so we're just gonna get rid of that. On to the second one, same thing. Start at a corner, lift it up, just small cuts, slowly. Work your knife under the skin, peeling it back. All right, so pretty simple. We pulled the skins off the top of these. Now you could spend a whole bunch of time if you really wanted to, trying to trim these down to get them all symmetrical so they look pretty. But this is for family and friends. They're not gonna notice the difference. All they're gonna know is how good these things taste. So we're not gonna worry about any of that. All we're gonna do now is cut them into cubes. So I'm just taking a larger knife here. We'll start with a smaller one first. And if you're not sure on how big you wanna cut them, they will shrink up a little bit. Maybe just mark some lines on them first so you can get a little bit of a look at what you're dealing with. Mm, this one here might be a little bit not square. That's all right, if I go back the other way. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So that's gonna give me, we've got one, two, three, four, five. We're probably gonna get a 10 out of this one, probably a 10 out of that one as well, even though it is slightly bigger. So just gonna go through now and cut along those lines that I laid out. We're gonna cut our strips. Okay. And then once we've laid our strips out, just put them to the side, turn it sideways, and just finish off cutting your squares. And what you're gonna end up with, eventually, is something that looks a little bit like that. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead, repeat the process, and square up all these other strips. Okay, pretty simple, we've got them all cubed. Now my math was out a little bit before when I said five, I meant five by five, so 25, and that's exactly what we've ended up with here. So pretty straightforward. Now I'm gonna do the same to the other one, and once we've done that, we're gonna transfer this to a wire rack, and then we'll hit them with some seasoning. So the rub we're using today on our pork belly burnt ends is Bulldozer's Hogfather. Now this is a beautiful red rub, it goes great on chicken, always comes up good on pork ribs, so I know it's gonna be a cracker on these pork belly burnt ends. Now, this has to be probably one of the most versatile rubs on the market at the moment, and the reason being is you can control the spiciness or the heat temperature of this rub. You can take it from mild, to wild and the way you do that is with this little satchel. Now this comes in the rub on top and you can literally add the amount of chili you want to the rub. So if you like me, you like it spicy, you add the whole lot in, you give it a great shake, you apply it to your meat. However, if your family, your friends, the people you're cooking for don't like a lot of spice, well maybe add half a satchel and even if you add none at all, this is still a fantastic flavored rub. Now the best part is if you live in Australia, click on the link in our storefront below. We have this rub in stock and we can ship it out to you straight away. So now all we're gonna do is take our rub, I've placed them all onto this wire tray, and I've just popped it in a dish so we can catch any of the uh, excess rub and reapply that to the meat so we're not wasting anything. So all we're gonna do is add a liberal amount of our rub to the pork belly, and you wanna try and get all the sides coated as best as you can. Okay, so now we turn them all over, and what you wanna do is just bunch them up together like that so you haven't got too much space. That way you'll get maximum rub on there without too much wastage. 
whatever we've left in the bottom will rub over the remaining pork belly burnt ends. So really pretty straightforward up until this point now. So the burnt ends are ready to go into the smoker now that we've given them that generous coat of hogfather rub. So let's go outside and we'll get our pit ready. All right, so today we're smoking our pork belly burnt ends on the Traeger Ironwood 885. We're using uh, cherry pellets and we've got it set to a temperature of 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So pit's come up to temp. So what we're gonna do now is place our pork belly burnt ends into the center of the smoker. We'll come back and check on them in about an hour. All right, so our pork belly burnt ends are cooking away nicely outside on the smoker and it's time to make up the sauce. Now, I've been using this same recipe for quite a number of years. In fact, we made a video a while ago using this exact same recipe on chicken wings, so you can check that one out later. Uh, but there are a few things you need. You don't just mash the peanut butter and the jelly together. It just doesn't taste that great. You need a few other things to enhance the flavor, but also balance it out. So I'm gonna put a list in the description below of everything that you need right here, but I'm gonna run you through them really quickly. All right, so the ingredients is as follows. We need a quarter of a cup of peanut butter. Go with the smooth, it's just easy to stir in. You've got half a cup of strawberry jam. That's our jelly. We've got two tablespoons of honey, quarter of a cup of Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one teaspoon of black ground pepper, a quarter of a minced red onion, and two tablespoons of your favorite rub. Find something that's got sweet and a bit of a kick to it. And for added, added kick, you could also add a tablespoon of hot sauce or a little bit more if you really wanna fire this recipe up. So what we need to do really is just move all these ingredients into a bowl. Now you don't wanna sit here and watch me do that, so let's get that done right now. And there you go, we've transferred it into this bowl. Now what you wanna do from here is grab yourself a fork and give it a really, really thorough stir and really mixing that peanut butter around into the jam and use the back of the fork just to try and squash the chunky bits of the jam down until you get a nice even style consistency. And once you're happy with that consistency, what you wanna do is grab yourself a jar. Now you don't need a fancy jar like I've got here. You could just use a leftover jam jar, something like that. As long as it's got a lid, you can pop it in the fridge for around 24 hours. Now this sauce will probably only keep for a week or two. So my suggestion is just make up a batch that you need on the day because it won't really last that long. All right, so we've brought our burnt ends in. They've been out there for around about two and a half hours now. So not that it matters, but what you're really looking for is that probe tenderness. So these are probing super soft. If I hold this one up here, you can see with just minimal effort, basically it goes straight through. Um, for those who are interested in internal temperatures though, this one here is sitting at about 200, 202, somewhere around there. So, but it's all about that tenderness. So you want them to be nice and soft, nice and squishy. So all we're gonna do now is take them off this wire rack. Now, a little tip, if you haven't got a wire rack, don't steal your wife's out of the kitchen because the last thing she wants to do when she goes to break, bake bread or cookies is have to pick out little bits of burnt pork in the rack. So these are really, really cheap. I think it's about six bucks or something like that at Kmart. We do have a video on it. You can go check it out about all the barbecue hacks you can find at Kmart here in Australia. But get some of your own racks, don't steal your wives. All right, so we popped them into this alfoil tray. So all we're gonna do now is take our sauce and we're just gonna apply that pretty liberal all over the top of our burnt ends. Now, if you're an eagle-eyed viewer and you're watching that and you're thinking that looks a lot redder than the uh, sauce that we originally made up, which had a real brown color to it, that's because when I took it upstairs to put it in the fridge, I did add a couple of drops of food dye to it. Uh, you don't have to do that. It's purely for cosmetic reasons, just to give it a nice red color because the color is pretty brown from that peanut butter. It's just about the look. It makes zero difference to the flavor. So if you care about it, add a couple of drops. If you don't care, just leave it off. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm just gonna add Put it back into the alfoil. Wrap that up. And we're gonna throw it back into the Traeger. All right, so we just put our burnt ends back in. Put that back in the smoker there for around about half an hour. Now, you don't have to put the alfoil back over. You could just throw it straight back in if you wanted to. If you're gonna do that, it probably only needs about 20 minutes or so. You really just want that sauce to caramelize, uh, just really get tacky and nice and sticky. All right, there you go, that's our burnt ends. Now I've just transferred them to this pretty looking plate, but I've already eaten a couple while doing it and they are absolutely sensational. They just melt in your mouth, they're like soft pillows. Absolutely beautiful flavor with that peanut butter and jelly. It's, it is rich, so you probably only want a handful, but I guarantee if you cook these at a party, you'll not be able to make enough because they will walk out the door. Now you could add some sesame seeds and make them look fancy, but I just really want to eat them and you can see here how soft they are. So without ruining one, they're nice and spongy, nice and soft, and 
Mm. And I can't chew that fast enough, but they are absolutely delicious. So if you've got any questions on this cook, please throw it in the comments below. We love answering questions like that. As I said, if you uh, want to order that rub, it's available in our store below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's free to do, helps promote the video. It means a lot to us. And what means even more is if you could subscribe to the channel, check out some of the other videos. We've got some other great recipes, gear reviews, and of course, lots of videos on barbecue competition here in Australia. Now, I'm gonna go and enjoy a couple more of these, not too many, but until the next video, we'll catch you then.